It was recently Nintendo's birthday, and it was pointed out to me by no one that we don't make many Nintendo videos. We don't, actually. So I decided to change that a little bit. And we we're going to talk about Star Fox. What happened to Star Fox? Whatever happened to the Star Fox franchise. As always, if you enjoy this video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content, and check out the links down below where we have a lot of other stuff going on we'll talk about at the end. Now, it's worth noting Star Fox originally was, uh, it's a pretty old franchise. It came out originally in 1993 with the first title. It was going to get a follow-up sequel, actually shortly after that, releasing around 1996, that was actually canceled. Ironically, the game was done. Developers have cited Nintendo's concerns that the graphic capabilities and gameplay of Star Fox 2 would have appeared outdated at that time, though, as well, because there was Sony's PlayStation coming around at the time, and Dylan Cuthbert, I hope I said his name right, he was an original developer of Star Fox and Star Fox 2, and he had said of this cancelled sequel, I don't remember if there was an announcement at the time, the internet was very small back then, I think the 3D market was advancing far quicker than they had realized, and the PlayStation and Saturn kind of cemented that. They decided to pool their resources on their next machine and start developing Star Fox for that instead. It was fully completed and QA. It would later be announced in 2017 that the game was going to finally release for the SNES Classic Edition and now on the Nintendo Switch. So what I'm getting to with all of this, and we're going to talk about some other Star Fox games here, me and Nate, is that this franchise has had a complicated history already. Right. We're only on the second game. Right. And in some of them we're going to gloss over very quickly here, but it does all play into where Star Fox is now. Because 64 was the next game in 97. Now, while they didn't say that this game was rushed, and Nintendo doesn't typically rush their games, they did get this game out rather quickly as a follow-up to Star Fox 2, which was proposed to launch actually uh, in sometime in 96. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty interesting how quickly they were able to get this going. They obviously had people working on N64 technology, though, before. Right. Since this was the end of the SNES era. Yeah, I kind of would like to point out what 64 was. Even though it was kind of rushed, that's arguably the best game in the series. It's interesting. So, and that was like the first game I ever played, too. And there's a little bit of memory with that for me. So but you're biased. No. Oh, okay. All right. I'm, I'm not sorry. biased at all. I have no biases. Yeah, me neither. Towards anything. Me neither. So, yeah, I don't know. I think that's kind of interesting. That was like the first game that really brought the series into more of a 3D style. I mean, the original kind of they tried. was 3D. It looked really bad. But Star Fox 64, I thought, was a great game. Like, it had really good graphics still to this day. Like, you can go back and play that and be like, wow, this actually looks kind of good. Worth mentioning, even Nintendo thought that since that game was later released as an enhanced port for the Nintendo 3DS in 2011. Yeah, which is an amazing game. And it sold very well at the time. Right. 2002, they made Star Fox Adventures for the GameCube. I think this game's interesting. Yeah. It, you know, it, it was uh, it was the first game where you got out of the R-Wings and actually got onto the ground, like walked around physically as Fox. In a weird way, because yeah. this was meant to be a different game. I believe it was called Dinosaur Planet originally. Right. I remember watching a documentary about this one. Miyamoto proposed that. Okay. As well to them. Uh, I don't know how he got to that idea right because it's very different from star fox but yeah it was kind of his idea to transfer that ip and rework it right it's just kind of a weird game but it did introduce every furry's fantasy that's for sure yeah crystal crystal with adventures and then assault i think that this is kind of where the fan base started to schism a little bit right and, and sort of split in terms of the gimmicky style of certain things, and I only call it that because of a quote we will get to later, mm -hmm. which also kind of talks about the general sentiment of Star Fox. Once they started getting out of the R-Wings and going on foot, although Nate and I both enjoyed that in Assault, I like it as well. Mm -hmm. A lot of people didn't like that. They liked Star Fox to play as a flight simulator, as a flying game, and that's what they wanted it to be. Right. That massive change, I think Adventures was what really did it, because it was just a complete opposite side of the coin. Mm -hmm. um, Assault combines both styles well, but Adventures is almost entirely just on foot. Right. 
Uh, you know, and then you get to things like Star Fox Command in 2006. Again, it is based on mo- uh, not motion controls, but stylus touchpad controls for the mm-hmm. DS. You get to 64 for 3DS, obviously, which is just a re-release, and then Star Fox Zero and Guard, which we have a little bit to talk about. But I do think that that element of change in this franchise, sometimes it is accepted very well. Some games like Final Fantasy, they can change all the time and somehow they retain their audience. Right. And they pick up new ones. Star Fox didn't. Mm -hmm. And we do have data to back that up. Because Star Fox originally started by shipping like 3 million units for the original Star Fox. It was actually 2.99 million. I'm rounding up by okay. a million. No, it's <laughs> yeah, 2.9 million units. And also Star Fox 64 shipped 4 million. It's worth noting that while there isn't exact sales data for those early games, like there was for, say, the PS2 GameCube generation, which right. is one of the most accurate, because there was no digital really at the time, We do know how much they shipped, which was a lot. But with Adventures, it would only hit about 1.82 million. So we already had a fall off of about half of the sales, give or take. Mm -hmm. And you're going to hear me clicking around. They only shipped 1.82 million copies of Adventures, and there's no way they sold every single one. Right. So you have to think that's being generous. Assault then as well did the same thing. I would argue Star Fox Assault is a better game, and it only sold a little over 1 million. Right. 1.06 million uh, in terms of the sales history. So we start getting into more detailed data in that uh, in that area. Command is sort of the same thing, where again, a drop-off, only 530-ish thousand confirmed sales. Worth noting, yes, these things do not take digital into account, but a lot of these platforms, you know, pre- the 360, PS3, 3DS, that sort of era, digital wasn't really much of a thing. Right. A lot of people sort of try and give Star Fox Zero that benefit of the doubt because this game came out and it only sold 440,000 units. Mm -hmm. Despite probably being the most to-the-point Star Fox game since 64. Yeah. Like, the most true to just being a normal Star Fox game. Mm Mm-hmm. It sold less than half a million. And I would like to point out, in that game's defense, it was on the Wii U. Yes. The Mm. Wii U was a horribly marketed system by Nintendo. Yes. They failed that system. So it's worth mentioning with the Wii U that while, yes, it does deserve that credit, and I'm not using this to bash Star Fox, even a re-release of a game like Twilight Princess HD on the Wii U still shipped over 1.1 million units right for just the wii u Mm -hmm. and again worth mentioning digital sales on the wii u were not at all what they are today Mm -hmm. this system had very little storage capability it's really bad that's the thing is like a lot of people weren't buying digital at that time because of those issues Mm -hmm. so when we get to this where is star fox now the the point of all of this by the way I want to say is we try and be factual in these as well as present opinions numbers are not opinion based right but why this happened is i personally think that part of it was change i think Mm -hmm. a lot of people don't like change and i think something you pointed out to me as well is star fox was always other than the first two entries a little more niche right than some other nintendo properties which is fair too yeah Yeah, it's never been mario no it's never been zelda you know it's never been pokemon yeah it's never been kirby it's never been these big games right and part of that problem is they've never made enough games to compete with those big games no they give their other games a lot of attention the only one that's worse off than star fox that i can think of just off the top of my head is f-zero yes and kid icarus Kid, yeah, Those Kid two Icarus. franchise got screwed into the ground by Nintendo. <laughs> yeah. There was interest in porting Star Fox Zero to the Switch to get more eyes on it. Yeah, yeah. The head of Platinum Games, uh, I'm going to butcher this, Atsushi Inaba. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. But he said this on porting uh, Star Fox Zero to the Switch. He said, quote, It's not cool that people aren't able to play older games because they're locked out of the platform. So, of course, if anything was possible, we'd like to bring over any of those older titles to the newer platforms. It kind of depends on what's in the realm of actual possibility, but yeah, if the chance came up, it's definitely something we'd like to think about. 
Well, he did go on to yeah. say, without getting into details on this one, because I think we'd just be dragging out the point, that he did point out that this is Nintendo's IP. Right. It's not up to Platinum Games. What's sad is that I do believe that game would do much better on the Switch. Oh yeah, I think so. I think it definitely will, because more people have the Switch than the Wii U. Yeah, and, and I, they're getting they're getting exposed. That sounds weird to Star Fox <laughs> through the SNES program as well. Right, yeah, they're getting exposed. Oh man, well, but, Star Fox <laughs> did get a lot of publicity when Star Fox Two was re released in 2017. Yeah, it did, and I think that I think bringing this game to the Switch, well, it does have problems. I think would bring a lot more people back into this franchise because Star Fox Zero, it it was like a prequel. Mm -hmm. right so star fox zero could serve as a great starting point if you wanted to go ahead and make future games in this timeline you could just have zero bring all new fans into the franchise maybe make a sequel to i don't know star fox command or so i'm just picking a random even game. remake the the older games you could remake yeah, they could one and two with they could. The zero engine and you know yeah go from there the switch didn't have those poor sales that the original we you did and i do believe that part of the reason that we don't see star fox now is because of declining interest over the years right it's worth mentioning obviously like we said there is an interest in old star fox because the star fox 64 3ds game did very well Mm -hmm. You know, if it's on a system that people own, I truly believe that at the very least among pretty hardcore Nintendo fans, which is probably a couple million people, right? there is a heavy interest in franchises like this and F-Zero and other things that Nintendo can offer that you can't get elsewhere. Even former Star Fox programmer Vitae Giles Goddard, when he was speaking with Game Explain in 2021, said that he'd like to see Star Fox return without the gimmicks. He said it would be interesting to do a Star Fox, I think, but not how the other ones were done. I think I would dial it back a lot, and I think he meant not include gimmicks, like, you know, the stuff Star Fox Zero had, and maybe even put in the free roaming aspects and stuff like that, which, by the way, we learned that there were originally in Star Fox 2, from a separate interview, some ideas with uh, sort of moving through portals in almost a free roaming way. Oh, so that okay. was actually an idea early on that was scrapped in the franchise. He went on to say that he would bring it back and he's not as sure how popular it would be now, but it would be really cool to try. And I do think that for me, that I think is what really solidifies why there was declining interest. I think that once you started doing the on foot stuff, you lost a lot of that really core niche audience that was really into what was Star Fox in the first two released games. But I think a lot of this is players, one, not being open to some of those changes, and two, some of those changes not being good. This is my personal opinion. I think that that is a little ridiculous to just expect the same game over and over again. Because to me, with Adventures, it always seemed, from my perspective of the game, that it was an interesting style of game. Maybe it wasn't the best, but it was interesting and it was different. Mm -hmm. Then you get to Assault, which again, I might be biased here. One of my top five favorite games of all time. I love this game. It added, it was, this one was a mixture between adventures and the original style. There's just as much flying missions in this game as there is walking missions. And did you notice that it is on um, GameCube as well? but it had thousands less sales. Yeah. Because a lot of people didn't come back after that change. After Adventures. Which is interesting to me because I understand that, but everything has its misfires. People fell off. Again, this happened with Assassin's Creed as well for a long time. With Unity, yeah. We see people fall off for years at a time and then come back. And I, I was guilty of that. Right. You know, I kind of was waiting to see where the franchise would go after Unity, and, mm -hmm. and now I'm sort of playing catch-up on some of it. Right. But I think some people never play catch-up. They never come back. Right. And that's my point. Like, I think if you loved Star Fox, right, let's say you played the original, let's say you played 64, and you're really into this franchise, and then you get to Adventures, and you're like, this game sucks, and you hate the game. But then three years later, they make Star Fox Assault, if you love the originals, why would you not try it out? Now, if you played Assault and you hated it also, maybe then you're like, well, I gave this franchise two games. Yeah. And I hated both. Worth noting, by the way, there, at least in America and Japan, 
there were kiosk demos of Assault everywhere. Right. People did have a chance to right. play it if they went to the store. Right. Try out the 30 minutes of free game right. that you get in every department store. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Like, it's... Now, again, if you hate the game, fine. You hate the game. Yeah. But then, I don't know. And to me, when you skip ahead, way ahead to Star Fox Zero, mm -hmm. I don't really understand why that game did so bad because it seemed like it was just the original style. It is majorly flying. Mm -hmm. Then they add some aspects of Landmaster and that weird walking thing, whatever it's called. Yeah, the walking form yeah, of the, Landmaster. Yeah, the walking phoenix, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, he's not running, though. Right, he's not. He's walking. But the game is like the original with some added gimmicks into it, where they add the Landmaster. They add that walking phoenix thing. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's like, to, I don't get why that game did so poorly. Well, uh, I think that it's worth mentioning, too, that while we are pretty young and played a lot of those games after they came out, I think a bunch of it is honestly timeline in terms of when we look at when these games came out. Gamers, there were so many years. Gamers who were playing them in 1993, you know, and 1997, right? Right. A lot of them grew up, a lot of that generation as well. Um, right, it's 20 years later. You know, they have kids, they right. maybe don't play video games anymore. I can't imagine giving up video games, but I'm mm -hmm. also in love with them. What's mm -hmm. sad is that Zero is the perfect starting point, but it was stuck on the Wii U. Right. I just think that was so unfortunate. This is probably my favorite franchise with Nintendo. I love the Star Fox games, and I really wish Star Fox Zero brought more fans into the franchise. It seems to me like Nintendo does not have a heavy interest in Star Fox because they believe players don't. Right. Which I don't think is necessarily true. Mm -hmm. I really do think that it's a lot of unfortunate events, gimmick changes. Some of them were not good. Star Fox Adventures is not the best game. I don't hate it like some people do. Mm -hmm. But I do think that you should allow those missteps when making a franchise. One mistake doesn't need to spell the whole community leaves. Right. And it's a little frustrating that that's a big part of what happened. The franchise did actually have some interest as well in terms of other side games too, or side appearances. It's not like they've completely forgotten them. Star Fox characters have appeared in a variety of other games, both developed by Nintendo and third-party game developers. For example, Fox, McCloud, Falco, and Wolf all make multiple appearances as playable characters in the Super Smash Brothers franchise. Really fun characters to play as, by the way. Yeah. And the R-Wing is playable through an expansion to the Ubisoft Toronto game Starlink, mm -hmm. which is neat too. They haven't forgotten this exists, but it sits somewhere a little bit like Konami's Silent Hill. Right. It's sort of like paraded out once in a while as a side character type thing in something else, but it doesn't feel like anyone has cared since 2016. Yeah, I think it's uh, pretty sad that Nintendo uses not just Star Fox. You know, I'm talking like Star Fox. I'm talking Kid Icarus. It seems like Nintendo only cares about Mario. They only care about Zelda, Kirby, Donkey Kong. Uh, and even Donkey Kong, not that much, right. surprisingly. <laughs> and it's like, and then they have other franchises like Star Fox, Metroid. Besides Dread, there hasn't really been anything for Metroid right. in a while. Isn't it sad that a lot of people's main exposure to those characters is Smash Bros. and that's it? Yeah, and it's like, and they're it, obviously they're good characters, or else they wouldn't be in Smash Bros. So why did you take the time to put them in Smash Bros. and then just not do anything with them? Yeah. Like, I, I get it, I get it. Not everyone in the entire universe loves Samus as much as Mario. I get it. If you make a Mario game and you make a, a Metroid game, the Mario game probably will sell more. But that doesn't mean that your other characters just don't exist. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's always bar bothered me with Nintendo, is it seems like they make a, a character and they're like, oh, well, it didn't sell as well as Mario. Let's just put him on the shelf. And like every like five or ten years, they're like, well, I guess we'll make a game. This comes back to something that I always say about um, not capitalism in general, but the way that it is used in the gaming industry and the movie industry. Yeah. The point of it is supposed to be to make money and make art, mm -hmm. you know, and that successful art that is well marketed should rise to the top and continue if it's good quality being made. Right. right? The problem is that 
No longer are companies satisfied in making millions of dollars. They now have to make all of the money. Mm -hmm. If you can't make Avengers Endgame, why are you making this movie? It's a waste of my time. Right. If you can't make Super Mario Odyssey, why are you making F-Zero? This mm -hmm. is a waste of development resources. Make me an our Mario Odyssey. Right. When you bring in investors and shareholders and the always connected era, there's always this pressure to make more, 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 more right. money. And if they can't do that, a lot of stuff goes by the wayside, which is a shame. They're in those other franchises for nostalgia and for gamers who remember them. And of course, like everything that Activision owns, it will never be let go so that someone else can just make a damn game. Right. They'll hold on to it, and every 10 years, they'll make a random game. Maybe. It's garbage, and they're like, well, no one likes this game, yeah. so, and then they're not going to do anything. It's like Spyro Reignited, where yeah. it, it, it didn't sell quite good enough. Right. I don't care anymore. Everyone hates Spyro. Yeah. But Even it, though we neglected him for, like, 15 years. I know, and my thing is, like, I feel like these companies do not understand the fact that gaming, not just gaming, like, media uh, people. Entertainment. Entertainment all people. Of but specifically gaming fans. They will play something that's good. They will get into something that's good. Mm -hmm. How many franchises in Nintendo, uh, PlayStation, Xbox, how many franchises across all those companies have started out something and it became huge? Something that's not Mario. Yeah, Call of that's, Duty, that's a good example. Exactly. It was, it was actually not the best game no. ever for the first few at all. And now and, it's a huge game. Yeah, and it's arguably declined, but right. it, it got that audience and kept going. Yeah. Because they knew to kept, keep running with it, maybe too right. much, but right. they did. <laughs> so it's like, if you, if you as a gaming company, if you, if you take Star Fox, for example, because this is the video we're talking about, and you actually make a game that's amazing, like you put the time, you put the money into this game, I guarantee you, people will buy the game. The reason why people didn't buy Star Fox Zero, one, it's on the Wii U. Two, people were probably tired of the franchise after Adventures and Assault. But that doesn't mean that people aren't willing to give Star Fox a chance in the future. Right. I wish that Nintendo were to understand that fact. When you're helping keep the lights on at these companies, it can get really frustrating when something you like is completely ignored especially if you have good ideas for it. Right. But hey, man, you don't know how to code. What do you think about this? Are there other franchises you want to see us covered? Why do you think this franchise disappeared? Why do you think others have? Very interested to hear your thoughts on that. Let us know in the comments down below and be sure to check out all of our links, including to our secondary channel, Degenerate Plays, where we play through a wide variety of games together. Nate and I are over there as well. We are currently playing through Medieval on the PlayStation 4, the remake of that. So we hope to see you over there. Have a fantastic day, and as always, everyone, stay shway.